welcome to my talk. I'm happy to see uh, a few people here to be interested in workload automation. Um, before I start, a uh, short question. Just raise your hand. Uh, who did work with um, IT workload automation or enterprise job scheduling before sitting here? Okay, two. That's good. So there's a uh, uh, few people uh, here to learn something, I hope. Okay. Um, I want to talk uh, to speak about workload automation because I'm thinking that right at the moment the demand is rising uh, on that point and the intent of uh, being here and talk to you about this topic is to motivate you to reflect on the way you are solving automation problems in your uh, Linux environments and maybe to find out that there are better ways to do that. Okay, um, first we will, uh, I will just uh, do a, a short introduction upon uh, me and my company. My company is called Independent Integrative Technologies. Um, maybe I'll find some time to uh, say something about the integrative in there because it's uh, very important. Um, and um, yeah, this is a quite small company. There's a, me and my uh, uh, co-founder of the company is uh, Ronald Jenninger. He's a mathematician. I'm a computer scientist, so I'm not, not a business marketing guy. Um, and uh, you will also see this talk will not be a very technical talk because it's not, not possible to explain our system in a technical way in 20 minutes. But it's more a, um, um, a talk, a general talk about the topic. Um, but um, I'm into ev nearly every line of code, so if you're interested to, to and have questions on how we did things, just come to our booth and then I will answer every question. Um, just a little bit of history. Our company was founded um, about uh, in uh, 1997 as a consulting company for database projects. So we uh, did consulting jobs in data warehouse projects and uh, telecom and banking area. And during our work, we found that uh, doing automation of processes, uh, especially in data warehouses where it gets complicated, um, is a big issue. And uh, to have a solid uh, automation is important. And that brought us to the idea to start developing a scheduling system to automate all those processes necessary to build up those systems. And yeah, so that was about 20 years ago, and um, then an, a German Linux evangelist uh, uh, came to us and said, what about bringing an open source release of your system, because th there's no open source enterprise job scheduling which is mm, usable. Um, and we said, okay, let's do that. And so we um, released Schedulix, uh, we will talk ab about that later. Um, as an open source enterprise scheduling system and I personally think it's, yeah, it's the best one available. Um, maybe the only one which is really capable to do a, a good automation. Okay, so what is workload automation? Basically, it's the coordinated and automated execution of processes in a heterogeneous network. So, simple speaking, just started, starting of programs, running programs, monitoring programs, and recording what the result of those programs were, whether they were successful or something else. And around that there's a software class, it's called Enterprise Job Scheduling Systems or Workload Automation Systems um, to support those automation tasks. And processes, so programs have to be started on demand or just timed like using cron or something, um, or in other events, using dependencies or resource changes or uh, other events in your um, IT, which will just trigger the execution of programs or uh, whole groups of programs or a, a whole batch chain or something like that. And that's the first point where we will see that cron doesn't fulfill um, the needs because you need dependencies. You cannot uh, process uh, or load the data 
before your FTP transfer of the source of the data has finished transferring the data to your system. So you have change of, uh, chains of processing which have to be managed and maybe some of you already know that um, ah, this takes 15 minutes so let's schedule the next one just half an hour later then we, all, we will be good and it will work uh, most of the time but the first time it doesn't work it will maybe produce a catastrophic result um, and you lose a lot of time. Um, you have to uh, have a look at resource usage. You cannot just run a hundred processes at, uh, of something at once. You cannot run um, on your database system uh, 20 real huge queries producing loads of temp uh, space usage and so on. So you have to um, manage that to control the uh, resource usage. Um, so you need to control the load and you, you maybe you need some load balancing to distribute uh, the work to more than one machine um, to, be, to scale your system. Um, so a simple example, if, if, you, if you are uh, rendering a um, CGI movie and you have to render a thousand frames, um, you will need a, a system which is distributing the rendering process to your render form and do a workload balancing for uh, each, each frame. And you need something which, is, which synchronizes your um, processes. So things which are not really directly connected. So you have some programs which are cr uh, creating reports and you have other programs or um, batches or scripts which are um, updating your tables. So you shouldn't run a report during the updating of the table because your report might uh, deliver inconsistent data. So you have to synchronize that. So let's look a little bit to the historical background. This should be an image of a mainframe, but it's Blue Gene, it's a supercomputer, sorry for that. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about mainframes because that are the, the, the mainframes and mid-range systems were the root of IT before Linux and Windows and all those things. And that was mainly batch processing systems. And those systems, job scheduling was just standard because they were just batch processing systems, so everyone had this. So people which coming from those main t mainframe side of computing, you don't have to explain them why you need a, um, a job scheduling system. Um, there are adaptions of those systems for Linux and Windows and uh, Unix environments, but they are not widely accepted, and that's for two easy reasons. Those systems were adapted from the mainframe philosophy, so they are quite inflexible, they are bureaucratic, they are um, mostly railway scheduled based systems which work fine if you have every day the same load and you're, you're quite safe that your processes will succeed so it's if it's all working smoothly you can live with that then you have a railway schedule and it will not break but in today's complex environments we have a lot of failures because of snapshot to old in oracle or uh, out of temp space or um, file system full of what else. So if you have a huge environment, you will get very, very quickly into different problems every day. And you, though you need a really flexible system which can deal with that. And railway-based schedule systems which have a daily plan, uh, planning everything at a timing level, um, are not uh, able to do that. On the other side, um, we as a um, Linux users, um, we are coming from a world where we have a very narrow view, um, a more interactive view, um, development systems or just interactive systems and maybe standalone server systems. And in this systems, um, scheduling is uh, not really a topic because you don't have much batch processing. And it's even if you and that's also a problem, I don't want to go into that because then I talk a half an hour just about that, um, is the thing that um, today's 
developers, I think, they're just looking at their thing, they're, they're building a, a software deployment system, so they just look at that. The other ones are building database systems, they just look at that and they forget that if we want to make Linux great in corporate environments, we have to integrate them all. And to integrate them, they have to play together. And to play together, you have to schedule them. Yeah, to make sure that the backup system doesn't start backup uh, when the, data, the, the heavy data processing of your ETL loads is still running. You shouldn't, because that would uh, waste a lot of resources and or m might cause problems. Okay, and that, for that, most of the Linux users are not know anything about this kind of software and they also know, uh, don't know what th this kind of software can do. So, why, what has changed that we think that this is more important today than a few years ago? Um, the first thing is Linux systems are no longer islands in corporate IT systems. The success of Linux came when, yeah, let's exchange those Microsoft file server with a Linux file server. Or just use a Linux system for, as a mail server. Or use a Linux system as a web server. But it's always this island thinking. So just have one system, it has one function and it will do the job. But if you think upon workloads from mainframe systems, they will will get more and more transferred to our decentralized Linux computers. More and more core processing of banks, day-end uh, uh, processing of financial systems and uh, big data warehousing and so is more and more moving away from mainframes to Linux systems. And so you have get more and more interconnections, you've got more and more processes to automate. There's more and more virtual or real machines um, to handle it's more and more processes to automate in all those systems. And we've got new technologies like yeah, data warehousing, big data, arti artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence, which have to move loads of data around and do r processing change to, to, uh, to get uh, a an, an result um, those systems can work on at the end. So there's a raising demand for a solid IT workload automation we think, in the Linux world. But there is none. So, what do you do? Yeah, you use the scripted automation approach. So you use cron and the huge number of scheduling mechanisms built in software systems. The backup system has an own scheduling system. Your ETL system has an own uh, automation system. Um, your software into DevOps integration system has an own uh, proprietary uh, automation system to do that. So you end up with uh, many different automation systems and each one is just built to do this task it was built for. And no one has built a, a scheduling system with the idea to be able to control anything. Yeah. Okay, so I have to really speed up, sorry. Um, this all will be glued together by a lot of scripting and this has consequences and drawbacks, high development costs and maintenance efforts, lack of documentation was already what we were talking about before and we have a complexity which is growing exponentially because the systems will rise in which every new process to integrate it gets huger and there are more interconnections to take care of. And so scripted automation just doesn't scale. It, if it reaches a certain point of complexity, you're in a quite big danger that it will just break down. And we have a small story about that. Our Mr. or Mrs. Nichols, so, um, looks like a mister, okay. Um, he has to manage his IT and he has a workload. So our blue circles are just processes which have to be automated to run every day to transfer data, to create reports, to do data transformations, to consolidation, data warehousing and uh, loads of things. And 
you're, you're quite easily in, in, a, in a, you have in your company about a hundred thousand of those blue dots to have to be, or much more, to be executed every day. So, what is he doing? Yeah, he uses cron and built-in schedulers and a lot of scripting, some metadata, temporary data, control data. So, you get um, a scripted automation which is woven into every production system and it's constantly growing and for the same problem you end up with 10 different solutions and um, it gets more and more complicated the bigger the load, workload um, will become. So, what is everyday uh, problems? Um, a report is out of date, so he has to dig into all his automation things and log files to find out what's going wrong, what was the cause of the problem. And at the end, if at the point where he realized what the problem was, he has to fix the problem. But then he has to fix everything which was done after that. So he has to repair his system and he has to do it by hand, changing scripts and commenting outlines of scripts and rerunning scripts. and real trouble. And in addition, he has to integrate some ETL process which is newly developed. Here again, he has to, to find, uh, remember and, and uh, review how the uh, data warehouse is automated and again, editing scripts and doing programming to, to get everything right. And because it's not his best day, he get, has a crash database system uh, causing problems. And again, he has to find out which programs failed and how to restart that and what can I restart without causing troubles on, on other points in, in my, my company. So, um, he just got a lot of problems because he is in a time stress, he has to fix things and to do that he needs all those deep knowledge upon this, I call this red things automation hut. To, to not that to hold it so that it doesn't fall off, and that's a better way to do it. So if you use an enterprise job scheduling system with Schedulex, you've got a central server. You model your jobs, your processes to execute in the repository of the server. You connect them. You build up all dependencies, all resource usage things, and you have a central system controlling everything you get completely rid of those scripted automation hat. You don't have uh, local scripts interconnecting processes which is other and controlling the correct order of execution. That's done by a central server. Yeah? There is an agent, but that's a standard software installed at the remote systems which is executing the things the uh, central server is um, um, thinking to execute. But what do you get? You have a central monitoring operations. You go into your office, look at, start your browser, and check the process state of your system in minutes. So you open it, everything is green, you know it's fine. If something failed, you see, oh, there's something red line. You go there, look at the log file from the, uh, from the web interface, and say, okay, it was a snapshot to all, just rerun, and everything just continues. You don't have to remote log in and edit scripts and doing scripting and programming to solve the problem. So, you've got easy failure tracking. You've got a very efficient restarting and continuing of batches and backlog handling after some problems. Um, changing and adding workloads is just a few clicks away. If you think you have a, a script um, who is executing three subscripts, so th three commands in, all, in, in row, and someone tells you, please parallelize it, let it do a concurrent execution, so you have to do, start them in background and do the signal handling and, and uh, traps in, in shell and so um, takes him, if you're really good it takes you an hour, but you have to be a, 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 a specialist to do that, to have a production proof and tested thing after an hour and Scheduleex it takes minutes to do that. And so you've got uh, drastically removed development costs because you don't have to script automation and you don't have to uh, deploy all your automation scripts all around uh, your system. So, 
at the end, your system is much more stable and it will be also more reliable. Because, for example, if, if you find out that every now and then a job fails because of um, um, a file system full in temp space, and you find out that, oh, there's another process running at the same time and they clash it because they both need too much temp space. Um, if you have a scripted automation, it may take you hours to solve that problem. Within Schedulex, we'll just create a resource and say uh, to those things that they should synchronize on this resource and the system will just make sure that they will not both run to the, at the same time. Things like that. Um, and many more. I could talk hours about that. Okay, so Schedulex is open source. It's uh, free to use. And it can be used from the beginning with minimal costs. Um, it's always better than scripting any automation hut to say, um, it's easy, it's just, let's do it quick and dirty. Um, it will always will lead to problems later. So it's a short step uh, of, of installation of that system and uh, a few days of uh, training and re reading, but then you have a system which will guide you even if your system grows to m m many hundred thousands of processes to control. And if, uh, if your project grows, schedule grows with it. We have done benchmarking uh, telling us on the smallest IBM Power 8 machine which exists uh, without big tuning, we simulated a thousand agents and uh, uh, controlled more than one million processes. In fact, we had uh, high marks of three or four million, but I'm de defensive, I'm saying more than one million. But with a tuned system, with, because it's the, the, the limit is just this guy of the underlying database system, uh, it can be stressed much uh, further. Um, real load is our, we have a large customer uh, in Germany which does this data warehouse automation executing about 100,000 process uh, programs every day to get his daily, daily data warehouse processing done. And if, if you need higher functionality and if you're interested I can explain where the difference is our schedule X is full-fledged in doing schedule X, uh, in doing scheduling it's not like a teaser where you start with it and then uh, one day later you find out you have to uh, go to a professional it's not that way so we'll just take a minute and then I'm done so it's open source and it's free it's 20 years technology proven and reliability and customer satisfaction. We haven't lost one customer in those 20 years who decided to use it. Um, it's always on the same patch level than our commercial system. There's a Google forum where you can get help and our mission is that we should implement Schedulex as a standard thing like Apache for web services. Schedulex should be the platform for um, Workload automation. So, um, last thing, just click it through here. Visit us at our, our booth, get information, have a look at the website, watch a few tutorial videos. There are white papers with a lot of information on, on that. You can contact us, you can install it easily without cost, register to our Google group to get help, and just join the community and come to me at my booth if you have any questions that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, I hope it wasn't too fast at the end, but... Um. La landing right on the 25 minutes. That's fairly <laughs> impressive. Uh, so, questions? Let's see if the... Habit works. I think it does. Hello, hello? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, so, A is... Uh, is Schedulex available on uh, any Linux distribution? And do you know of any interesting free software projects which are using Schedulex? I'm thinking maybe projects like GitLab, it would be interesting to use uh, this kind of okay. schedule. Okay, we have um, um, RPM packages for Red Hat and CentOS. Uh, we hadn't got the time to build other packaging, but there is a 
let's say, raw installation guide. So um, you can download the software and compile it on any Linux system and follow this installation guide to, to install it maybe if you know what you're doing, it takes you an hour or so, um, but there's not so so much automated thing yet. Yeah, we're still working on that. Let's take take that one offline. Just keep the questions quick, please. There was another one up there somewhere, I think. No? Okay, sir. We can talk that later. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Can you uh, follow the modern DevOps process and configure it using code, or does it configure using some kind of um, web interface? I'm not really in understand what you mean. <laughs> I can expand on that later. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, I think we'll cut it there. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So.